Hi, this video is for my A-level electronic students. Uh, when we get back after the long summer break, we're going to be making this circuit. So I thought I'd make this video. Uh, hopefully it's also going to be useful for other people as well. And the whole purpose of this circuit is so we can build on a bit of uh, breadboard like this, a suitable circuit that we can um, do some programming for interrupts. So I've just got this one switch here for interrupts. This switch is just a power switch. So uh, let's just have a quick look at the circuit. Uh, you might not be familiar with breaking a relatively complex circuit up in small parts like this. However, when we start to study it, hopefully you'll understand that it actually does make things a little bit more simple. So let's just take a quick look then. So we've got the power supply here. Um, so I'm suggesting a 6 volt battery. Uh, you could use a lab power supply. Uh, the reason last year, if you're one of my students, we found that Basically, 6 volt uh, supply is probably optimal if we've then got a diode dropping about another 0.7 volts. So that then gives us the supply voltage for our microcontroller. So I've just called this name net uh, MCU VDD, microcontroller VDD, the positive supply. So, um, battery or other source switch and diode. And uh, so this goes off to my lab power supply. I've got zero volts. I've got the uh, positive supply voltage, which then uh, comes on that wire, goes to the switch, switch returns on the white wire, goes through the diode, and then goes to the topmost rail that runs all the way along the board. Zero volts uh, runs all the way along the bottom row. And then just for my convenience, because I like to have like, you know, five volts, zero volts, five volts, zero volts, so I've just jumped it across the top and bottom rails there. Uh, other things, we've got a power on indicator. I find that really useful. Uh, obviously, you can see when the power's on. Uh, also, additionally, if you short out the circuit somewhere, often the, that LED is going to go off. So that's a good hint that something's gone wrong. So, uh, oh, better turn the power supply on. There we go. So, yeah, I can then turn the circuit on and off like so. Much better than, say, disconnecting the battery all the time. Um, so, I mean, that's that's super easy now. Um, the power on indicator, just a resistor, um, LED, and then go to the zero volts there. Should be able to calculate the value for the resistors. I'm not going to go through that. Um, we've got a debounced input that uses two resistors. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Uh, so uh, RB0 is what we're going to use as our uh, digital input and normally it's going to be pulled high and when we press the switch it's going to pull it low so when the switch is pressed that goes to zero volts when it's not when the switch is not pressed it goes to whatever the supply is like about five volts um, we're going to debounce it we're going to use um, uh, this capacitor to uh, smooth things out a little bit and I've uh, stuck that in that's like slightly optional but that actually uh, limits the discharge rate of the capacitor. I don't want to go in, into too many details about that because uh, we're not doing RC circuits at the moment. We're just like trying to consider uh, microcontrollers. But that's the uh, mini part of the circuit I suggest for using the debounced input. Oh, by the way, as I haven't mentioned it so far, I've used named nets. So I use Circuit Wizard to make this whole uh, circuit schematic. So. I dragged in a terminal, uh, labelled it uh, MCU VDD, and then so then I uh, basically I just control drag that to other places, uh, or I can just drag another terminal and name it. So long as they're named exactly the same thing, it's effectively saying this this terminal here is directly connected to that. It saves drawing wires in and making the circuit of a um, bird's nest. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, what else we got? We got the microcontroller. Um, at school we're using the PIC16F84A, let's just uh, zoom a little bit. Um, up until recently I think that was a preferred microcontroller for WJC slash EDUCAS. Um, however they did change to another one, I can't remember what it is, PIC16F something or other. Um, instruction sets are the same, pinouts are the same, the new one though has some analog inputs. We're not using analog inputs, we've still got a load of these chips so we're using these. So if you're one a student at another school who's using the other microcontroller, probably this whole circuit's going to work the same. Uh, so what do we got? Um, we've got the power supply pins uh, on pin 14, that's VSS, pin 5. Um, 
pin 4 is the uh, reset pin and it's an active low so if pin 4 goes to 0 volts the pick resets itself so stop it happening we pull it up to the supply voltage uh, we put a 10k resistor in there if if you weren't connecting this whole circuit up to a pick kit you could get away without having the resistor it's a good idea having the resistor but you don't have to have it um, but because we're going to be connecting a pick kit you know this thing um, yeah you definitely want the 10k in there uh, what else we got? Uh, we're going to have some outputs here. These RB1, RB2, RB3, so they're all part of port B. We're going to have those as outputs. A couple of LEDs and a, um, a little buzzer there. Uh, what have we got? RB0, that's going to be the input, so basically that connects directly to that. And uh, oscillator one, oscillator two, I've named those nets os one, os two, you can name them whatever you like so long as it's consistent. Um, Circuit Wizard doesn't have a symbol for a ceramic resonator so I just dragged in a three pin single in line connector. Um, yep, so these os one connects to there, os two connects to there. The middle pin of the ceramic resonator uh, connects to ground. It's really useful using a ground symbol. I know a lot of people don't. You know, you have wires going everywhere. Maybe a wire going all the way from there, all the way across, around to the uh, zero volts in battery. No, don't do that. Just use a ground. Just use a ground symbol. You know, it's much easier. Uh, what else we got? Uh, programming clock, programming data. We're going to use those on the pick kit. And uh, yeah, let's zoom out a little bit. I did actually record this video just previously, and I thought, oh, no, I blabbed on for far too long, so probably bore the hell out of everyone. And plus, it was just too long anyway, so hopefully I'm not whizzing through too quickly this time. Um, right, you might get a little bit confused about this. Look, if you look at the pick kit, um, the triangle points to pin 1. But, um, so pin 1 is the uh, reset pin, so actually... It's not like that, it's like that. <laughs> or, in other words, it's like that. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah? So, pin 1 goes to the reset pin MCLI, Master Clear. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Let's have a look at the circuit itself. Um, right, okay, let's just turn the thing on. Yep, so it's turned on, got my power on indicator there. Um, I've got this uh, LED flashing which I think was connected to RB1, okay, so yeah I've just coded up with some assembly so it flashes that just for a quick demonstration. Uh, this switch uh, is going through my little debouncer, going to RB0 which I've got configured as an external interrupt. So if I press that, the code for the interrupt service routine, the ISR interrupt service routine, handles the interrupt. Um, which is handling the fact that RB0 went to a low value. And yeah, so my code then turns that LED on. You know, I could have coded it so on a second press then it turns it off. I haven't, but you know, it's not a problem at all to do so. Um, yeah, so that works well. By the way, uh, um, if you don't debounce the switch when you're using interrupts, effectively, like when you press a switch here, in fact, let's just, I don't know if I can zoom in at all. I uh, know I'm going to start rambling on for too long now, I can just sense it. But if you see, you see the contacts? So there's metal contacts in there. So each time they, they come into play, um, although you might think, you know, that's one press, it's actually likely to have bounced like 50 times or something. The interrupt service routine works so quickly, potentially the interrupt service routine might run 50 times. You don't want that, so you actually want to slow things down a little bit. So that's the whole purpose of the debouncing. Um, yeah, so that's 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 the uh, circuit. I'll try and zoom out a little bit. Uh, that's the circuit we're going to be using. Um, the way I've got this, um, let's just turn the power off. Uh, I'm just going to show you know all of my students will be familiar with this, but maybe it will be useful for someone else. Uh, in class, we sorted up some of these on a little bit of strip board, so we've got a 90 degree header. And a straight header uh, that we use, so we can just all the way around, so we can just plug that in, 
Let's see if I can get this plug back in correctly. There. So, I can plug it in like that. Now, um, I think it's worthwhile just pointing out, so yeah, so I can do in circuit serial programming there. I would need the uh, USB lead just plugged in the end. The one thing that's likely to cause some people a problem, you might be thinking that the pin on the left is pin one, but of course it isn't. Does that make sense now? View it around that way. So pin one, the rightmost pin, that's the uh, reset pin. Okay, so this orange lead, if you can make out the colours here, that lead is the reset, so that's going to come across there. So that's pin four. Pin four is the reset. Okay, so it hopefully makes sense if you think of it around that way. Don't. Whatever you do, think of it around that way, otherwise you get the pins reversed. Which I have done before. Okay. Um, so I'm almost losing my voice there. Uh, other things that you might want to consider doing, uh, if you're one of my students, in fact, I'll pretty much stipulate it. Uh, yeah, switches off board. Use some pegboard. If we run out of pegboard, we just get a load of MDF. We've got a cupboard, a cupboard full of it. We're lazy cut some holes in. Um, yeah, tie things down like that. They're using some long cable ties. Uh, cable tie your switch down as well. That stops it flapping around in the breeze. Uh, cable tie your um, power switch. You know, do solder up some uh, wires onto the switches. Makes it really easy. Um, I'm using a lap power supply. I don't want the thing to short out, although I have um, put current limits on it. Uh, so I've cable tied these wires apart. Um, if you're using a battery, yeah, why don't you get your battery pack, um, cable tie your battery pack down onto the board as well, which I think a load of uh, you did last year. Um, that's about it. Hang on. What I'm going to do, maybe this will be a useful point. I'll just zoom in a little bit. And um, you might want to just like pause it there if you plan on building the circuit. So I just uh, just hold it there just for a moment. So hopefully everything here is uh, relatively straightforward. Um, I strong, if you're going to build the circuit, strongly recommend, you know, do that. Get a multimeter out, test that the rails are the voltages that you want, then add a power on indicator. Do not try to build the whole thing, then plug it in, then find it doesn't work. Just do it incrementally. So do that, do that. Put your, um, your pick microcontroller in the centre of the board. Connect up the power, uh, connect up the power there, connect up the zero volts there, add yourself a decoupling capacitor, uh, 0 0.1 microfarads, that's going to be a ceramic, uh, most likely going to be a, a small ceramic capacitor, 103, written on the side. Um, yeah, so once you've got that connected, then go for the, you know, pulling up the reset pin with the 10k resistor. You know, do things incrementally. Once you've done that, you probably want to add the uh, resonator maybe, add the picket interface, and then and then even before you've got anything else uh, connected up, why don't you try a little test program, see if you can use MPLabX to program it. Just, you know, do anything, just communicate with it, and then you know that your microcontroller is working all right once you know that. Add some outputs, say, and then write a test program to check the outputs once you know that they're working okay. Then add, um, add some more of the circuit, you know, do it incrementally. Please try not to do the whole lot at once because that's probably the uh, most common mistake and yeah, people then find it doesn't work and then where's it gone wrong? Well, you've got to check everything. If you do it incrementally, uh, you should find it a lot easier. Okay, I hope that's useful. Um, if you're one of my students, I will um, see you next week and we will start building the circuit and uh, we will talk interrupts and how to program them in assembly. Okay, that's it for the video.